Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on bacteria and viruses. In this video, bacteria will be introduced. Bacteria, when casually mentioned, include all prokaryotes, or organisms that lack a nucleus. When looking at all creatures on Earth, this would include organisms that belong to the domains bacteria, or eubacteria, and archaea, or archaebacteria, as shown in this phylogenetic tree. So what are bacteria? They're prokaryotes. They're small and simple organisms. Bacteria are unicellular, or made up of one cell. As the image on this slide shows, they are often 1 100th or 1 1,000th the size of eukaryotic cells, such as the ones that make us up. Because bacteria are so small, they don't need many of the cell parts or organelles that eukaryotic cells need. They don't need complex transport systems that might include the Golgi or the endoplasmic reticulum since they're so small. Bacteria are about the same size as some organelles, such as mitochondria and chloroplast, that are found in eukaryotes. Bacteria are made up of very few structures. Ribosomes, a cell membrane, cell wall, DNA, RNA, and sometimes a few extras. There is a separate video that will describe these different structures and their functions. As the introductory slide mentioned, there are two main groups of prokaryotes. These two major groups, two different domains of life, are archaea and eubacteria. Archaea, or archaebacteria, are shown on the top and are sometimes referred to as extremophiles, as these bacteria are usually found in very extreme conditions. An example of where this type of bacteria might be found is a sulfur spring in Wyoming. Archaebacteria often survive in places that no other organisms can. Eubacteria are the prokaryotes that are most frequently encountered by humans, covering virtually every organism and surface on the planet. The picture on this slide shows E. coli, which normally inhabits your intestines, that can sometimes lead to food poisoning. Bacteria reproduce asexually through a process called binary fission. Asexual reproduction means that identical offspring, or clones, are produced. Binary fission, a simple process illustrated on the right, where DNA is copied and cells just split in half, allows the very small and simple prokaryotes to reproduce very quickly. Under the right conditions, bacteria can double in number every 20 minutes. The primary setback to binary fission is that it does not allow for diversity. Again, every cell produced is genetically identical. To solve that problem, bacteria can use three techniques to get new genetic information. These three techniques, conjugation, transduction, and transformation, will be described in the next few slides. Conjugation is the process by which bacteria share information with other bacteria. Some bacteria produce a structure called a pilus, or a conjugation bridge. With it, bacteria can share plasmids, which are small circular chunks of DNA, with one another. The picture on this slide shows the process of conjugation, where the bacterium on the left attaches to the bacterium on the right and shares DNA with it before detaching. Note that at the end of this process, both bacteria now have the same purple plasma. Conjugation is, in essence, bacterial sex. In a conjugal visit at a prison, an inmate is allowed to spend private time with their spouse. This alternative use of the word might help you remember how it's used for bacteria. Bacterial transformation is when bacteria pick up DNA from their environment. DNA from organisms that have died sometimes end up spilling out, and instead of eating this DNA for its energy, bacteria sometimes take it in through their cell wall and incorporate it into their genome, gaining new information. The last process by which bacteria can gain new information is called transduction. In transduction, bacteria are accidentally given new information by a virus. Just like viruses can infect humans, they can also infect bacteria. When, vi when viruses infect organisms, in a process that will be described later in the unit, they hijack a cell and have it produce lots more viruses. Normally, the virus's DNA is packaged into a virus, going out to infect other cells. Sometimes, however, the host cell's DNA, shown in blue in the illustrations on this slide, are packaged instead. The resulting blue DNA virus, shown in the bottom section of the picture on this slide, would not infect the next host cell. Instead, it would introduce new genetic material that could happen to be helpful to the new bacterium. That is the end of this video introducing bacteria. If you're interested in learning more about bacteria and viruses or any other topic relating to biology, 
please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.